गुड आफ्टरनून से शुरू करो ठीक है गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबडी आई विल बी टेकिंग योर पॉलिटी क्लासेस पॉलिटी इज अ वेरी इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ द वेस्ट बेंगाल सिविल सर्विस एग्जामिनेशन ओके द रीजन इज दैट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू आर गोइंग टू गेट एटलीस्ट सिक्स टू सेवन क्वेश्चन इन द प्रिम्स एंड इट कैरीज हंड्रेड मार्क्स इन मेन सिक्स if you read the subject properly if you have a good hold over the subject properly okay you could easily score 85 90 plus marks in this uh, paper right and this is somewhat equivalent to that of the maths paper either you know it or you don't but there is a fun in the polity the polity has been divided in many chapters okay many uh, sub chapters but actually if you read polity from uh, From a three sixty degree angle, you will see that each and every topic is interlinked. Somewhat, in some way or other, the chapters are interlinked with this portion or that portion. Okay, so it's a very interesting subject to learn Indian polity. But my point of view with respect to Indian polity is, at first, do not try to mug it up because this is a brand new subject for many of the students, especially those students who have not read polity ever before. But To some extent, this subject is a known subject to those candidates who have come from this ICIC or CBSE background, because there was a, a part, or you can say there was a subject called civics. It included the quality uh, 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 what what we have to study right now. Okay, Indian quality does not mean you have to understand the politics. Understanding politics that's your personal affair. If you wish, you can go for it. Okay. even there is a misconception that we have to understand the whole of the constitution itself no that is also not required we have to focus mainly on those things of the constitution or those things of the polity which are actually required for the wbcs exam okay so in the previous years questions if you follow the trend you will uh, get to know that uh, the questions that have been asked in polity is mainly from the surface level okay and often the question has been asked from uh something you can say uh, 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 uh you can say uh, we have to dig deeper to answer few of the questions right but polity is a very interesting subject if you give time to polity it will in return it will give good marks to you that will be very beneficial for you to score good marks in the mains examination okay because if you score see if you score 90 plus in this subject you are uh, getting an edge over other students right so make sure that quality is in the love list of your subjects of gs okay so with this let me start with the topic which is actually the most important topic for almost all of the exams okay and this is not only important from your exam perspective it is actually important from uh, being a citizen of india okay as you are the citizen of india you have to think that uh, you must know your rights you must know what are your duties okay each and everybody must be aware about our about their rights what rights do they enjoy okay and what are the duties they need to perform fine so it's quite uh, understandable for you right now as of that which topic or which uh, chapter i'm talking about i'm talking about the fundamental rights okay what are fundamental rights and why this has been given the name fundamental at first you need to understand that fundamental rights are those rights which have been enshrined in the constitution in part 3 okay so part c look rights at first you need to understand what are rights okay if you are asked to define what are rights rights are nothing but the claims obviously legal claims rational claims but not only claims that claims or you can say the legitimized claims must be backed by the society must be approved by the society and backed by the law itself so rights are nothing but the claims that are accepted by the society and backed by the law these are called as rights okay there are many forms of rights originally the concept of fundamental rights uh, is a brand new 
not brand new, not in that sense. Don't say as of now, there are three generations of rights, first generation, third gen uh, second generation, and third generation. Originally, rights, but nowadays the rights has been classified, right? So the first right that was given to the human, that was called as natural rights, right? So what are natural rights? Natural rights are nothing but the rights that has been given by the nature, okay? Just by virtue of being a human being, by virtue of being a living being, you are enjoying the rights, right? Right to air. You need a separate legislation or a separate constitution or a separate statute to give you the right to air, no? Right to food, okay? So these are all the natural rights, okay? But the main problem with the natural rights was that there was no guarantee. There was no guarantee who is going to, or you can say if your rights are uh, taken from you, where to approach, okay? So the next form of the natural rights was the human rights, okay? Human rights are nothing but a codified form of the natural rights, okay? When the natural rights are codified in a statute or in a book, okay, or in a law book, you can say, that is called as a, uh, you can say, human rights, okay? The first example of human rights was the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, okay? It was given by the UN, though I'm not talking about the history of the rights. The history of the fundamental rights dates back much earlier. As of uh, uh, as of the present scenario, you can say as of the present situation, it has been taken that it was in the year 1215 that uh, King John gave the rights. But there is a evidence of uh, uh, rights which were granted in the 6th century AD. Okay, that's not a part of your syllabus. No need to go into that much of depth. But just want to inform what you can say, just acknowledge the fact that rights aaj ke liye, aaj ke dine daniye jay rights kulo ke amra constitution er modde dek chi, shayi rights kulo er modde onik rokh mein classification aja, onik bhaag aja, there are many forms of rights. There are political rights, there are civil rights, there are human rights, there are fundamental rights. Okay, uh, then there are legal rights, there are constitutional rights, there are many forms of rights. Our focus is to focus uh, mainly our uh, point of learning or you can say our point of, um, uh, from the examination point of view, you need to understand the fundamental rights, okay? So fundamental rights, why these are fundamental in nature, okay? Why we are saying that these are fundamental? These are fundamental, there is a question which has been often asked in the examination, that why these fundamental rights are called as a fundamental, okay? It's not that we, uh, these are fundamental for the governance of the countries, okay? That is, the, uh, if that question is asked, that answer will be DBS. Okay. That means any point of time, if you are if you are being asked that which among the part or which rights are fundamental to the governance of the countries, your answer will be part four. That is directed principles of state policies. Okay. But here the word fundamental means these are basic rights. Okay. Basic rights which are given to each and every individual residing in India, not only the Indian citizen but also who are coming from abroad, right? So this human rights, or you can say this fundamental rights is not only given to the citizen of India, but also to the people who are coming to India, visiting India, okay? That means these rights are applicable both for the citizen as well as the foreigners, fine? Next, these are fundamental in the sense, these are the such type of rights which is actually required. If we do not enjoy the fundamental rights, the moment we will cover the fundamental rights, we will get to know that if we do not have these basic rights, it was not possible for any human being to grow properly or to, you can say, to develop oneself properly. Like we have the freedom of speech and expression. We have the freedom of movement. We have the freedom of uh, uh, to reside at any part of the country. Okay. So there are many types of rights without which we could not grow as a proper individual. The society couldn't have been good. Okay. So the what these so the that's why these are called as the basic rights or the fundamental rights. So at any point of time, if the question is asked why these are fundamental in nature, first of all, these are basic rights. Number two, these are those rights without which a normal individual cannot grow into a full human being. Okay, not physically, but mentally. Okay. Uh, so these are actually the basic rights which must be given to each and every individual for a full growth of an individual personality. Right. Achha. Next come to which article covers fundamental rights, Article 12 to Article 35. But Article 12 to 35, these are not the rights only. Okay. 
because in article 12 Okay, sorry for the interruption. Anyway, so what I was talking, I was talking about the articles. Articles 12 to 35 covers the fundamental rights, but not all are all these articles deal with the fundamental rights. Okay. Because in article 12, we will find the definition of the state. In article 13, we will find the definition of the law. Similarly, up to article 32, we will find the fundamental rights. Okay. 33, 34, 35, these are something different. We will complete later on. Okay. So the first thing first, at first, we need to know about the feature of the fundamental rights. Okay. That is most, uh, you guys, the most important thing. Until or unless you are having a good knowledge about the feature of this chapter or uh, what is the objective of this chapter, you won't be able to relate the rights with your own self. Okay, but why we require these rights? Why these rights were given to us? Fine. So at first, we need to understand what are the features of the fundamental rights. The first thing is that these are basic rights. These are basic rights in the sense without which what I've said, without which a person cannot grow properly. Okay. These rights are required for an individual growth, not only of the individual growth, as well as it is required for the growth of the society also. Okay. So these are basic rights. Next number. Inalienable rights. That means this cannot be taken us, take these rights cannot be taken away from us. Even, even if we wish to give our rights, we cannot give so. Because there is a doctrine associated with fundamental rights in many of the countries. There is a doctrine called doctrine of waiver. That means if we wish, uh, if we want to waive off our rights, we can do so. The moment we are uh, waiving off our rights, we are giving much space, a broader space for the legislators or for the executive to make laws. Though the lawmaking process primarily deals with the legislative, but to some extent executive also can make laws. Okay. So the moment we are waiving off our fundamental rights, the moment we are giving up our fundamental rights, the legislators are going, are getting better space, more space to make laws. But in India, these are inalienable rights. Even if you do not like to enjoy your fundamental rights, no matter, you cannot say I'm waving off my fundamental rights, or you, can, you cannot say I don't want these fundamental rights. It's not like that. Fine. You, you have to enjoy the fundamental rights because these rights are not only for you, these rights are for the community as a whole. Okay, because individual makes up the community. Fine. Next. These rights. establishes the doctrine of limited government. Okay, what do we mean by this? That this fundamental rights actually establishes the doctrine of limited government. What does that mean? That means government is limited. Okay, the legislature, whenever they are making the laws, they always have to keep this thing in mind that we cannot encroach into the domain of the fundamental rights. Okay. Because fundamental rights enjoy a very secure position in the hands of the judiciary. Fine. But does that mean that fundamental rights are absolute in nature? Does that mean that fundamental rights are sacrosanct in nature? Does that mean fundamental rights are permanent in nature? No. Because fundamental rights even can also be taken away by a constitutional amendment. But there is a point which you need to remember that is 
fundamental rights cannot be taken uh, abruptly. It requires a constitutional amendment first, and that too, fundamental rights can be taken away only when the judiciary is satisfied that taking away this fundamental right is not uh, affecting the basic structure doctrine or the basic structure of the constitution. That means, though these fundamental rights are fundamental in nature, they are enshrined in part three of the constitution, they are justiciable in nature. The fourth, the fourth feature, I'm coming to it. The fourth feature, they are justiciable in nature. Justiciable in nature, which means at any point of time, if our fundamental rights are being affected, okay, by the state, state, we will see the definition in Article 12. At any point of time, if our fundamental rights are being affected, okay, we can drag the state to the court. That to directly to the Supreme Court under Article 32 and under Article 226 to the High Court, right? So these are justiciable rights. This justiciability actually ensures that the government is limited, which means government government legislature kaj law to any So at any point of time, if the legislature is making the laws, the legislature have to keep this thing in mind that. Whenever you are making the law, you have to think that there is a concept called fundamental rights, which are justiciable in nature. Okay, so these rights, I cannot make laws affecting any of the fundamental rights. If I'm doing so, I will be dragged to the court. I will be answerable to the court. Why I am making these rights? We will see this in Article 30. Okay, Article 13, Clause 2, uh, which is mainly dealing with post-constitutional laws. Fine. So these are justiciable in nature. These rights establishes the doctrine of limited government. Fine. Can be curtailed, okay, or you can say also be taken away. The best example is right to property. Okay. Previously, it was a fundamental right. Presently, it is a legal right under Part 12, Article 300A. So, originally, there were seven categories of fundamental rights. If the question is asked, how many rights are there? If at any point of time, if you are being, if you are faced with this type of question, how many fundamental rights you have? Your answer should not be six. Okay, you have many fundamental rights. You have many fundamental rights enshrined in Article 19. You have many fundamental rights under Article 21. Okay, these are the categories of fundamental rights. Previously, there were seven categories of fundamental rights. Presently, there are six categories of fundamental rights. Okay. So, right to property, which was enshrined under Article 31, and it was under Article 19, Clause 1, Sub Clause F. As of now, it has been deleted. By 44th Amendment Act 1978, the status of right to property was not that of the fundamental rights, but presently, it has been shifted to at Part 12, Article 300A, and this right to property now enjoys. The status of a legal right. Fine. And what I'm saying that they, uh, these are not sacrosanct in nature. That means they can be taken away, they can be um, curtailed, they can be modified also to some extent. Okay, even to a larger extent. Okay. Achha. Then uh, you can say fundamental rights are uh, enjoyed by the citizen as well as the foreigner. Okay. What was the previous number? Previous number was five. Okay. Enjoyed by both citizens and foreigners. Okay. There are five exclusive rights which are only for the citizens, or those rights are enjoyed by the citizens only. Okay. Like Article 15, Article 16, 19, 29, and 30. These are the five rights which are exclusively enjoyed by the citizens of India. That means these rights are not available to the foreigners. Other than this, Article 14, next Article 20, Article 21, 21A, 
22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are the rights which are enjoyed by the foreigners also. Fine. Next, are the fundamental rights available only against the state or both? That means fundamental rights available both against state and private individuals. Okay, what do I mean by this? By this, that it is available, or these are available against uh, the state or the private individuals. What do I mean by this? There is an article called 15 clause 2. Okay, then article 17. These are the rights which is not only against the state, but also against the private individuals. Okay, even the citizen, they can also they cannot also discriminate. Okay, what we'll find in article 15 clause 2. Even as a citizen, we cannot promote untouchability. It's not only the state. Okay. It is also against the private individuals. Fine. Fundamental rights acts as a shield against the invasive nature of the state. What does this mean? Invasive nature of the state. See, once the state is created, okay. The state is created when the constitution came into force. Okay. Once the state is created, we are the subjects of the state. Okay. The state is there to make laws. The state is there to govern us. So what I've said, the state is there to make laws. The moment the state has been given the power to make laws, and if that power has been uh, given absolute, the state can encroach in the private domain of the individuals. Okay. That's why fundamental rights act as a shield against the individuals. Okay. See, this is the state. This state, this is a fundamental right. State Japani Kono rights to Idi Koche, State Japani Kono statute to Idi Koche, the law to Idi Koche, state ke always fundamental rights to put a focus on the Jami Amunkuno law to Manachina, they have a fundamental rights for individual and affected right so that that person can drag me to the court. Okay, fine. That means this fundamental rights actually act as a shield against the uh, invasive nature of the state. Because, you know, see, state will always try to innovate in the personal lives. Okay. The reason is that the best example is like privacy. Okay. There is a concept of telephone tapping. That means the state is always trying to innovate into the private individuals of the, um, of the people or the, into the uh, private life of the individuals. fundamental rights the state, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. Okay, that means these are next point. Most of them are negative in character. So many are positive in nature. Okay, what do I mean by this? They are negative in character. Most uh, most of them are negative in character. So many are positive in nature. What does that mean? Positive nature. Fundamental rights is nothing but a negative obligations on the part of the state. DPSP, these are the positive obligations on the part of the state. Look, fundamental rights and DPSP, both are rights. The basic difference between fundamental rights and DPSP is that Fundamental rights are justiciable in nature. Okay. Whereas DPSP are non justiciable in nature. In Article 38, it has been clearly mentioned in the Constitution that these rights are not enforceable. 38 means I'm talking about the DPSP. Okay. So DPSP are also rights. Fundamental rights are also rights. The basic difference between them is that fundamental rights are justiciable, whereas 
DTSP are not fundamental lights. Most of them are negative in character. Negative means it's not like he, uh, uh, the, the word itself seems a negative thing, but negative means the state state has been restricted from doing this. Okay, he state you have been given the power by the constitution to make laws, but that does not mean you will make laws uh, at your whims and fancies. Okay, you always have to focus on the fundamental rights. You always have to focus on your restrictive areas. You are not a, a, a free person. You are not a free uh, individual or you are not a free organization to make laws, whatever you want at your whims and fancies. Okay. That means they are negative. That means the state, you shall not do this. State, you shall not do that. Not, not, not. State to me at a Kurvena. State to me at a Kurvena. That means most of them are negative in character. Fine. Though many are positive, there are also positivity in it, right? Article 21A, that is right to education. The state make must make uh, arrangements for the free and compulsory education from 6 to 14 years of age. Fine. So that is a positive one. Clear? Next. I mean, could strongly take look at discuss for today and anything should be discussed over here. Okay, not to worry. Not all are self executory in nature. What does that mean? That means not all fundamental rights will work by themselves. There are many fundamental rights which need a support of the law of the parliament to function. Article 17, Article 24, okay, even Article 21A, these are the rights which requires a separate legislation so that these rights can be uh, uh, enjoyed by the people residing in India, also some who are coming from the abroad. Okay. This means not all articles are self-executory in nature. Okay. Article 15, self-executory in nature. Article 16, in the article 17, abolition of untouchability. Constitution should do bolo abolition of untouchability. EJ abolition take in practice court tegele. I'm going to separate law like that. That means Article 17 is not self-executory in nature. It requires a separate law or legislation to perform. Clear? Okay. This is not a part we discussed over here. In general, now come to the four parts of fundamental rights. As I have said that there are previously there were seven categories of fundamental rights. But presently, there are six categories of fundamental rights. Okay. Right to equality, 14 to 18. Right to freedom, 19 to 22. Right against exploitation, 23 to 24. Right to freedom of religion, 25 to 28. Cultural and educational rights, that is 29 and 30. And finally, Article 32, that is right to constitutional remedies. Okay. Which itself is a fundamental right. And this Article 32, Article 32, right against constitutional or right to constitutional remedy. Okay, this was defined by B.R. Ambedkar as the heart and soul What do we mean by heart and soul of the constitution? Okay, this means without these rights, without article 32, the rest of the rights is nothing. Mere a piece of paper, mere a declaration because the rest of the rights, if those, if those rights are actually the uh, you can say electrical appliances in our house or in our home, whatever you say. Article 32 will function as a power. That means you have refrigerator, you have TV, you have washing machine, you have everything, but there is no power. So Article 32 acts as a power. That means at any point of our time, okay, if any of your fundamental rights are being affected, or you can say if your fundamental rights have been taken away, okay. You can approach the Supreme Court under Article 32. You can approach the Supreme Court directly. Okay. Again, I'm saying when your fundamental rights will be cut in, in normal circumstances. Okay. In abnormal circumstances, there are different scenarios. We will come to it later on. Okay. That during national emergency, if the national emergency is declared on the ground of war and external aggression, what happens? Okay. 
article 358 uh, ensures that article 19 automatically gets suspended once uh, uh, the national emergency is declared on the ground of what an external aggression. Next, the president has been empowered under article 359 uh, to suspend any of the fundamental rights. Yeah, fundamental rights suspend for the enforcement of the fundamental rights suspend. National emergency chalu hoyeche fundamental rights uh, suspend kora hoyeche mane enforcement. Toh mane jodi tokhon fundamental rights ta kire neva hoy, toh mane jodi tokhon tokhon fundamental rights ta enjoy korte na paro, you cannot move the court because national emergency is in operation. Okay, so Article 32 acts as a right to constitutional remedy, and that's why it has been called as a heart and soul of the constitution. Okay, fine. So formally. Article, as I have said, right to equality starts from 14 to 18. That means, whereas uh, in the beginning, I have said that fundamental rights actually starts from Article 12 to 35. Okay. And in total, the covering articles is 12 to 35. So, what about this Article 12 and Article 13? Okay. AJ, I discuss Kolam that these rights are against the encroachment of the state. Okay. State, you should not do this. State, you shall not do that, etc. etc. So, naturally, there must be a clear definition of the state. Okay. So article 12 defines state. Okay. Article 12 defines state. Okay. The state in article 12 is the same definition as that of article 36 in part 4. Part 4 deals with directive principles of state policies. Okay. Part 4 is stated the definition of Article 36. Hai. Article 12, mane part 3, teo, same definition. Okay. That means, ekhane state ke control kora hoche. Part 3 te state ke control kora hoche. State has been restricted from doing this and that. Whereas in part, two, part 4, state has been directed to do something. That means these are positive obligations, positive in nature. These are also rights. DPSP are also rights. But these are non justiciable rights. That means, at any point of time, if the state fails to implement any of the DPSP, you cannot drag, drag the court to the uh, drag the state to the court. But at any point of time, if the state encroaches your fundamental rights, okay, you can drag the state to the court. Fine. So Article 12 deals with the definition of state. We will come to it later on. Article 13 deals with the definition of law. Why I am saying this now? Article 12 state. Article 13 defines the law. Why? Because as I've said that fundamental rights are justiciable in nature. So if uh, at any point of time, if you are dragging the state to the court, court is a clear cut picture. Who is the court? Uh, sorry, who is the state? Okay. When I'm taking a when I'm lodging a complaint against somebody, that person must be clearly identified by the Supreme Court, or you can say by the High Court. Okay. So Article 12 based stated definition the Dorgat economy words. So naturally, state will take Kiki Puji. We we can make a, a simple idea: the central government, the laws of the central government, the central executive, the state laws, the state executive, or you can say state legislature, the local bodies, and there is a concept called others. The confusion builds. The confusion start with the concept of others. Yeah, others can that yeah, others. Okay. Previously, Supreme Court used a doctrine which is called, which is used in the legal terms as Agesdem generis, which means uh, uh, looking back and taking the decision. Okay, or you can say following the previous previous one. Okay, so but this concept had a very narrow uh, uh, identification. That's why it has been abolished nowadays. There are six to seven circumstances on which the Supreme Court defines that whether this can be calculated or this can be taken as others under Article 12 or not. Okay, a Article 12 has stated definition as a stated definition of others collect a concept. So, a others will tell the key buji. A other step will the Supreme Court test. There are uh, uh, six to seven tests through which Supreme Court decides whether this body can be called as a state under Article 12 or not. Okay, like uh, these, though these are not important for your exam. Okay, but just for the sake of your knowledge, I'm saying any organization which is taking a substantial fund from the state, or you can say any body which is working as a delegated functionary of the state, that body is also called as a state or any organization where state is, uh, you can say, working uh, state is in, in the governing body that can also be uh, taken under the definition of state. Okay. So article 12 deals with the definition of state. There are many other things. There are a few documents associated with it. I'm not going into it as of now. Article 13 defines law. 
ठीक है जी why the definition of law is important because fundamental rights jodi kono kono affected hoy by any law made by the state you can drag that state into the court tale law er definition ta clear hote hobe okay supreme court requires the definition of the law okay and this law the definition of the law has been given in the constitution itself okay there are four articles associated with it okay i am not going into the in depth analysis presently i will go each and everybody slowly okay but as of now just understand one thing that law anything law doesn't mean that a law must be passed by the parliament only law includes bylaws regulations customs usages okay uh, regulations anything okay which have the force of a law okay any any uh, any, any any law which has which has been which is running in india okay that can be uh, taken under the definition of law why this law the definition of the law is required okay there are two doctrines associated with it okay we will come to it later on doctrine of eclipse and doctrine of severability okay article 13 clause 1 deals with pre constitutional laws okay that means at any point of time the constitution came into force on 26 january 1950 that is the date of the commencement of the constitution right but the writing of the constitution was completed on 26 november 1949 first provision first provision constitution act 1949 ne chalu hoye chilo rest came into force in 2000, uh, 26 january 1950 okay but tar ago to law chilo okay तो जो लॉ गुलो आगे चिलो शे लॉ गुलो की कंस्टिट्यूशन चालू हर पढ़ते क्या के बारे नालान बोल रहे जब नो ओके सिस्टम टा जेटा होच्छे बार नियम जेटा होच्छे द प्रीवियस लॉस दे विल कंटिन्यू टू फंक्शन स्मूथली अंटिल और अनलेस आई रिपीट अंटिल और अनलेस डोज लॉस अफेक्ट द फंडामेंटल राइट्स ओके स eclipse means shadowing the previous laws okay that means once the constitution came into force fundamental rights will uh, have the upper hand okay any other law will not shadow the fundamental rights rather fundamental rights will shadow any other laws okay and severability means separating the laws that are inconsistent with uh, any part of the fundamental rights we will come to this in detail not to worry remember one more thing under article 30 constitutional amendment cannot be called a law Okay, there is a story associated with it. Started from Shankari Prasad case, ending in Minerva Mehta's case of 1980. Okay, that who has the power? That means any constitutional amendment can it be declared or can it be judged under the definition of law? Article 13, clause 4 states no constitutional amendment. Okay, can be called as a definition of law. But that does that mean that through a constitutional amendment, the parliament can do anything? Especially can take away our fundamental rights? supreme court has said you have the power to make laws no issue with it okay under article 368 you have been empowered by the constitution itself to make the laws but equally we have been given the power to check whether the laws made by you are constitutional or not okay so they evolved the doctrine called doctrine of basic structure as of now the supreme court has given a free hand to the parliament ki yes you are free to make laws but you have to remember one thing your laws Will come under the judicial review. Actually, this Article 13 specially deals with judicial review. Okay, it will be reviewed by the courts. Judicial review that is the power of both the Supreme Court and High Court. Okay, don't think that judicial review is only the power of the Supreme Court. Okay, judicial review is the power of the Supreme Court as well as the High Court. They will look to it that whether the laws made by the Parliament they are uh, going smoothly with the Constitution, they are saluting the Constitution, or they are. Uh, inconsistent with part 3 of the constitution at any point of time if they are against the part 3 of the constitution supreme court will come as the savior of the fundamental rights that's why supreme court is called as the guardian of the constitution you can say um, uh, the, our fundamental rights are in the safe hands of the judiciary okay so we will meet on the next class in the next class with article 14 even we will define article 12 and article 13 not to worry but uh, if you feel that this class is helping you definitely uh, uh, give positive response that will actually help uh, yourself indirectly okay chalo thank you
तो वो मैं कैसे देखूंगा पहली बार